Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I hope you're having a good weekend so far. I want to get into the October outlook where we are going to see tropical storm and hurricane development and what I expect overall. Right now, here's the broad picture. Again, what's left of Ophelia, that's been falling apart. Watching Philippe out there, that is not coming to the Caribbean. That's some good news. Even another system back behind it, also not coming to the Caribbean, although we really need to get some rain in some spots. I know that. I just don't want a hurricane uh, diving into uh, anyone watching a buildup of some rain. So I'm going to get to that. Now, let me get to October because uh, October is typically a very active month. August, September, and October, about 85% of all named storms happen just in those three months. And it's usually very active through about mid-October, uh, about October 15 to October 20th. Now, this time of year, as we go forward into October, late September into October, we don't look off the coast of Africa. Everything's been forming out there. That's because you have that global wind pattern, warm water temperatures. That global wind pattern, that uh, kind of uh, environment does change this time of year, and we start to look closer to home. Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, Western Atlantic for development. And my concern is with these systems happening close to home, not as much time to prepare for them, and that's why I'll be watching everything, diving into everything for you. Now, why do things develop close to home this time of year? As we go through October, even into November, hurricane season ends at the end of November, it's because we start to get some fronts moving by, not necessarily diving completely down into the Caribbean, but you get these fronts in the United States, they work across the Gulf of Mexico, and then they kind of stall out and fizzle out. But what happens is, this time of year, they leave behind a lot of moisture. So there's some available moisture here, here, extra rain and storms. And with leftover moisture, things could spin up in the Caribbean, in the Western Atlantic, and in the Gulf of Mexico. So I expect some close to home development. That is common for this time of year. On top of it, this year, the water temperatures have been above average. They're always warm this time of year, uh, but they have been well above average right through the Gulf Caribbean and right up, you see, over toward the Gulf Stream, of course, and then back through the Bahamas, over toward northern sections of Cuba. Very, very warm water temperature. So it's not going to be as hard this uh, year, this season, uh, the rest of the season, I should say, through October, to see things develop because the water temperatures are so very warm. So what I expect in October, close to home development, as I mentioned. Now, you get these fronts and they leave by some of that moisture right on top of some of the water temperatures that are so very warm, making it easier for things to spin up. Now, how does El Nino tie into this? When I did my forecast for this entire season back in March, I was mentioning it would be an above average season. That's what we had. I know a lot of folks were saying below average because of El Nino, but it takes a while, I've been doing this for a long time, it takes a while for El Nino to take effect. Regardless of if we have a strong El Nino over the next month or two or not, research has, has shown that doesn't have much of an impact in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. So again, El Nino at this point, not as big of a factor as we go forward. And in October itself, I expect about three named systems, maybe a little bit more. And we could get through the list of names this year. We're already close to that. Let me show you that in a second. Here's what's going on as far as typically throughout this season, uh, any season, September, uh, over toward October. Again, still very active. Things really shut off as we get into later November. In October, though, there's usually a little secondary peak, and that's because of those old fronts where things start to develop in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Caribbean. Now, as far as the list of names goes, we have Philippe now. Rena's going to develop right behind it, so it's not going to take much to get through this list. This season, there's a supplemental list, a whole separate set of names, not the Greek alphabet this year. So if we get to Whitney and then beyond Whitney, there'll be a new list of names that comes in play. And we're already getting close to that point. It has been very, very active uh, this season. Doesn't mean all the storms obviously have hit land. We've been seeing things curve away. And speaking of curving away, I want to show you the next two systems. This one here, Philippe, that is on track to stay away. And another system back behind it that is going to be trying to develop. So you see a couple things out here, the leftovers of Ophelia right here. And then we're looking out here. This is just kind of a very broad picture. My friends over toward the UK, over toward Ireland, we're going to see Philippe eventually curling your way. That could be a huge windmaker down the road, giving you that early heads up over toward parts of Western Europe. Massive windmaker because Philippe is going to make a quicker turn 
up into your direction, watching it for you. Here's the big picture as we work our way into Tuesday. Here we are in the Caribbean. We swing back toward Florida. Some extra rain here. Look at that Florida near Jamaica. Um, I'm going to zoom down into this in one moment and speak of that. But you see one system here and another one could develop back behind it. But like we've seen this season, high pressure has not been dominant. It's been more over here, allowing more of this action to curve. And that's what I expect with these next couple of systems to see some of the curving. But this is a sign of what's to come as we get into October. Look at some of the rain around. Cuba, we've had some near Haiti, Jamaica, scattered showers, little bit of a spin here, not tropical in nature, but always watching this. You get some leftover moisture from some fronts, and that's where things could kind of develop quickly. So please know that I'm on top of it. Also watching some of the moisture here and here as we get back toward Dominica. We've had some rain around Guadalupe and Martinique uh, from overnight. There's been some showers and you still see a more active period in the Eastern Caribbean, which is good because we need to get some rain in spots. So for the rest of today, see some of the moisture right through here. Uh, not as much in Costa Rica, although that's going to pick up. Trinidad, we could see some rain today. Grenada, watching some rain possible over towards Ceiba. U.S. and British Virgin Islands, we could get a chance of a passing shower. But look as we go throughout the week, because of a stationary front, just a dying front right through here, some of the rain starts to build as we work our way back into the Western Caribbean. Not seeing signs of development out of this, but the rain will pick up Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, uh, Belize, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, and Cuba. You see Monday into Tuesday, that rain chance will be bumping up, and then watching Philippe, which will stay well to the east of the Caribbean. Now, as we get into the Eastern Pacific side, it has not been very active. One system out here that will eventually fall apart, but keeping an eye on that for you. So in Jamaica, that rain chance is going to increase for us. By Tuesday, we're going to get a bump, even today and tomorrow, but we're going to gradually see the rain chance increasing the next three days. Staying active in Trinidad and Tobago doesn't mean all of us get the rain, but scattered showers and storms will be around. 40% chance today in Barbados, a 30% chance tomorrow. Some spotty showers possible the next few days in Grenada. Again, I wish we had a big blob of rain around that would be very helpful for us isolated shower storm st vincent the grenadines 30 to 40 percent chance the next couple days in belize but gradually going up some as we swing into early in the week dominica we have some rain and storms around right now at least nearby st kitts and nevis Montserrat, a 40% chance for today, a 40% chance today in Antigua and Barbuda, 40% chance today in Puerto Rico, very hot, heat advisories in place, passing shower, U.S. Virgin Islands and British Virgin Islands, and about a 30% chance today in Anguilla. 20% chance for tomorrow. Rain chance about 50% through the Bahamas. It's been active the last few days. Still today, scattered to widespread showers favoring northern and central Bahamas. St. Martin, Seba, Stacia, rain chance at 50% or 40%. 30% chance today in the Yucatan of Mexico. 40% chance in the Cayman Islands. But you see that rain chance going up, that extra rain around in the Western Caribbean as we go throughout the week. I'll be tracking it for you. Turks and Caicos, rain chance about 40% today. Spotty storms as we swing back toward Haiti. Dominican Republic, 50% chance today, a 40% chance tomorrow. Mainly dry in Aruba, mainly dry, not really seeing much of a change yet in Curacao. We'll start to see the pattern changing somewhat as we work our way through October and we get some fronts a little bit closer. Guadeloupe, rain chance about 50%. 50% chance today in Martinique. I showed you some of that rain that is close by already this morning. 60% chance the next couple days in uh, Costa Rica. 30% chance as we get into northern Venezuela. As we get back toward Guyana and Suriname, spotty showers possible, but the rain chance as a whole starting to go back down. Tuesday, we're mainly dry in Suriname. So as we go forward, the next two systems making a curve. Philippe and what could become Rena right behind it. Uh, there'll be big wind makers, though, as we get into the UK, watching Ireland as we get into uh, several days from now, but I'll be watching that, just giving you that early heads up. Uh, these are going to take more of a direct route uh, toward Western Euro Europe. Old fronts, we've got one that's around now. That's why we got some of the showers near uh, Cuba and watching for that development close to home. I do expect it to be above average through October end of November. That's when the hurricane season comes to an end. Last November, it was very active throughout the entire season, the entire end of the season. So again, October, closer to home development. I'll be watching it for you. Thank you for being part of this channel and taking the time to subscribe. I hope you have a good rest of your day.